Welcome everyone to KPL Cooks. It's kind of a big meal. Um, I could we could have done KPL Cooks as kind of a scary meal, but yeah. we lost that opportunity <laughs> this week. So we'll have to do it again some other time if we can do it next year. What are we working on today? Amy? So today we're going to celebrate uh, my favorite season, which is soup season. It's getting a little colder out. It's rainy. It's a perfect time to bust out your big pot and make some soup. So we're gonna make a pumpkin soup today, which is one of my all-time favorite fall soups, uh, just cause it's so like heavy with the vegetables. You can make it, it's pretty quick and easy. Um, and you can roast pretty much any pumpkin that you come across. But when you're making a soup or you wanna eat the pumpkin, what you wanna do is you wanna look for a smaller, more squat pumpkin with like a thicker outside. Um, so you don't want like the big carving pumpkins that they sell. Uh, those ones usually aren't, those, you, those ones usually aren't the best for carving and eating because they're kind of watery. They get really, really stringy. Um, so those ones aren't the greatest. So the ones that I brought today, just to show you. So there's, um, these are all heirloom varieties. This is a Cinderella pumpkin. Um, so it's really bright orange. And then it's, you can see it's not as tall. It's really squat, um, has really nice color. This is also an heirloom pumpkin. It's this pretty green one. This is the sugar pumpkin or sometimes they're called a pie pumpkin or like a sugar pie pumpkin. This one works really well too. Um, that one I'm gonna show you how to cut fresh and roast it. And then I also have this, other heirloom pumpkin that I roasted at home because what we're working with, we actually can't fit a pumpkin <laughs> in this. So I'm gonna cut this one open and show you how to do it. I did roast this one whole and then you can cut it and scoop the seeds out that way. So that's another option. So it's kind of different options with this soup. So I'm gonna leave this off to the side just for a little bit until we have our base ready. So other ingredients that we're working with besides pumpkin is we also have carrots. So I'm gonna use some different color varieties, but you can use whatever carrot you prefer. We have garlic. Always, have, <laughs> always garlic. <laughs> always garlic, I love garlic. I always put way too much garlic in stuff, but. <laughs> and then we have shallots um, instead of onion, just cause it has a little bit of a more subtle mellow flavor and it doesn't have as strong of like a bite as a regular onion. This is a pumpkin that I already scooped out earlier. Oh, so I'm gosh. actually not gonna use canned puree like the recipe says, but you can add that if you want more pumpkin. And then we have some rosemary, some sage. I was about to say, is that all rosemary? No, it's <laughs> rosemary and sage. I was like, that's a very different plant. And then we have a little bit of nutmeg, thyme, salt, and pepper. We have our vegetable stock, olive oil, and maple syrup. And then we have, um, so the recipe calls for coconut milk, but we're gonna use heavy whipped cream. So that actually makes this not vegan, but you can make it vegan just by using that coconut milk. And then to top it off, we can use any extra heavy whipping cream or the leftover if you have pepitas lying around. Um, I love these, these are just whole sunflower seeds. Um, or you can take the sunflower seeds, sorry, the pumpkin seeds from your pumpkin and roast them and use those as a topper too. So, so are pepitas and pumpkin seeds, is there like, like what's the difference? So I can show you once I open this, this little pumpkin up. So I'm gonna start cutting this. And how in the world are you going to cut that? So you want to kind of cut in a circle around the top. Um, so you wanna just, cause you wanna make a big enough opening that you can scoop it out. So this, I'm using a paring knife. I don't wanna use a big chef's knife cause that's a, that's a little too big for me. I'm gonna push it in and you can like kind of feel where it goes in. It's, it's like a pressure feeling, like there's something against it. Or yeah, something. so you can feel where it's not, where you're reaching the seeds. And this, you just wanna work carefully and slowly. Yeah, your fingers are nowhere near that blade. Despite it cutting through this, even though you said this isn't as thick of a pumpkin, it's still a 
big pumpkin. This will be thicker. Well, all of the pumpkins that you want to use for cooking are going to be, they're going to have thicker. The flesh of the pumpkin is going to be thicker. And I can show you that. So we're just going to work it around. Until we get to the other opening. And these aren't like trick or treat pumpkins. Like these aren't no. all like those carving pumpkins. So the carving pumpkins, yeah, are usually going to be, these are usually going to be in your like food section. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a pull. So you can see the flesh of the pumpkin. This part is a little bit thicker than a normal carving pumpkin. And that's what you want. So I'm just going to take more seeds. You can save the seeds. I'm just gonna throw them off to the side for later. Probably gonna roast them for everyone and bring them back in. So I'm just taking the skin off of the top real quick. We definitely have a trash can today. Yes. <laughs> um, we've, we have forgotten the kitchen trash can. Very important, have a trash can in your kitchen. So then once you are to this point, um, you're gonna wanna use a spoon and you're gonna scrape out all of like, the, the guts of the pumpkin, as my parents would always call it. And you wanna get down to where you're getting pretty clean. You're getting it pretty clean of all the, the seeds and the stringy bits. And then once you have some of it pulled out, can scoop right into the bowl. And then once you have it all scooped out, you just want to just wash these off. You want to get all the, the stringy bits. Anything you can use the stringy bits for? Is that just what, I guess, that anything you want? It's, I don't particularly like, uh, I mean, you could, I did cook one of the pumpkins whole and then you just pull it out. I mean, these don't really, they don't taste good. I've never <laughs> used them for anything. I've never, cause they have like a very distinct smell and taste. So you just wanna kind of get them out. Good as you can. This is definitely gonna be a hand rinse situation for me. Yeah, That's why we're in a kitchen, right? <laughs> yeah. Sink behind us and everything. And I asked Xander earlier what his favorite soup is. Oh yeah, my uh, my favorite soup is um, I always I just, I blanked on the name before too. It just um, who it was. I love um, I love any soup. Oh, oh the, the squash soup. Yeah, yeah. squash soup um, so is good. my favorite. French onion soup is another good one. That I was gonna say French onion soup is my hands down all time favorite soup. So if anyone wants to leave their favorite soups in the comments, I'd love to hear what kind of soups you guys like. So this part is kind of messy and a little gross. But you had to do similar when you did the acorn squash too, right? Yes, they have less guts in it, little squashes do. This pumpkin had a lot of seeds in it. Just keep coming. That's the thing though, like you gotta get all of those out of there. That's a lot. <laughs> I really, I did not expect this many seeds out of this tiny, tiny pumpkin. If you give it a good angle, I wanna see how so much there's further. There's a couple left in there. Wow, yeah, we can see them. So <laughs> I wonder, so we know it's um, pumpkin latte season <laughs> and there's no way they actually use pumpkin in there, right? Like it's gotta be something artificial, but the flavor is, if, have you had a pumpkin latte? Maybe? I have, I'm actually not the biggest fan of like sweet pumpkin things, but I think they just use that pumpkin pie spice. Mm. I think that's what they use in it. 
What do you think? You think they use actual pumpkin? Oh gosh, I, I there's no way. <laughs> Somebody's back in Starbucks just carving a bunch of pumpkins. Could you imagine? To make puree. All right, I'm gonna rinse my hands real quick. Oh no. Okay. Just a couple more. I've got to look at, there's a love of broccoli cheese soup. I must say, I am also, I do not like broccoli cheese soup. I do not like that either. I feel like that's more of a dip. I don't understand. I don't understand why that's so popular. I, but I, if you I, like it, you like it. Yeah. You like what you like. That is so much of that, the guts and seeds. All right, so I'm going to leave this because this one, I'm just going to show you how you would roast it if you, if you were going to roast it. We've got, a, then, we've got another comment of Minestrone. Min, minestrone? Min, that's minestrone? how you pronounce it? You say Minestrone? I say Minestrone. I've, that... I've always called it Minestrone. Okay. Is that wrong? I have no idea. I don't know either. We're going to have to look that up. <laughs> so this is, I mean, there's still a little bit of stuff in it, but you want it pretty clear of the little hairy bits. So this is pretty good as a vessel. And then it has its little, little lid, you can get it back on. Um, and then you can just throw some olive oil and salt and pepper, and you're gonna put it in the oven at 450. For about, with something like this, I would say like a half hour to an hour. It depends on your pumpkin size. So if it's something smaller, you just have to watch it. Um, I actually had an incident earlier today with a pumpkin that I tried roasting that I roasted a little too long and the bottom when I tried to pick it up just exploded. <laughs> so you got to be careful if you're going to use the pumpkin as a vessel to hold your soup. But if you're just trying to get the pumpkin out, and you just want to put it in bowls, that's fine. You can roast it a little longer until the skin is really soft. So I'm gonna put this one off to the side, but if I was roasting it, I would put it in the oven for about like 30 minutes to an hour until you can put a fork through the flesh. So 30 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. at 450. Depending on the size of your pumpkin. Like if it's a big pumpkin like this, this big one, you probably wanna do that one for an hour. I'm gonna put this one off to the side and let it hang out. So then I'm gonna start with our soup base. And I'm going to switch out this. Get a new cutting board. So our soup base is going to be shallots and carrots. So I'm going to start with the shallots first. And I'm going to cut the tail of them off and the top. Because the top of the shallot is going to be where the flower will grow out. So it is kind of dry on that part. And then usually they have, if you cut them, there's usually a little space where you can cut down the shell and just peel the skin off real easily. So you cut the ends off and then make a little indent with a knife and take the skin off. off yeah, you just end. wanna take, take the skin off if there's any like dry bits of the shallot, you wanna take that off too. Okay. So I'm gonna do the other one the same way. So I'm just gonna cut, cut. I'm gonna discard that. And this has a bonus little part. So we're just gonna peel and discard. I would say with the bonus, you got that for, you got an extra free bonus, but they, they measure it by the ounce, don't they? <laughs> yes, they do. I'll cut more of this off because this little bit did not want to come off for me. And sometimes shallots, you can peel them. Sometimes they come off real easy. Sometimes it's a little bit of a pain, but I think it's worth it. I like that they have more of a delicate flavor than onions. And usually when I'm peeling a shallot, I'm not just crying hysterically. I was about to ask, does a, a shallot make you cry ever? It, it really doesn't as much. Like you can tell 
you're in the same room, so it's not as strong of a of a scent. Yeah, I feel something, <laughs> but it's not it's not hitting me. So I'm just gonna do a rough chop. So I'm just gonna cut just like twice. Like halfway in. Kind of. Kind of how you would an onion. And I'll move my hand in just a second. Okay. Yeah, see that is, you get such a good dice out of how you chop. And you, I mean, you can cut it really however you're comfortable cutting it. This is just how I learned. I was just complimenting your skills, Thank your you. culinary skills. I don't know. I always love this time of year, I make just a ton of soups. I, this one is so fun to make though. I like being able to put something into something else. I feel like that's been a theme of our cooking classes is let's put this in something else. We did the stuffed squash. Separate these a little bit. And then I'm going to, once I just cut this up, I'm going to turn on my little stove top. We have this little conductive stove top, so it'll stick to it and it won't move. So I have my shallots already here. And then I'm just gonna turn this on to saute because we wanna give it, give it some nice flavor. So we're gonna let that heat up it does heat up pretty quickly. I'm going to toss a little bit of olive oil in it just to coat the bottom. Just to coat the bottom? Not just a little, little bit. You can always add more. So based on the pot you have, coating so, the bottom is all you. And I have to remember that it yells at you if you move it. So I'm not going to move it. Do a little bit more. So I am going to put the shallots in first, and then I'm going to put in the carrots, but while we're waiting for this to just start heating up, I'm going to move it off to the side, and grab another one and start cutting up my carrots. So what's the, is there an important reason to use different cutting boards for these? Well, usually just when you're working with food, especially if you're working with like meat or dairy or fish, you want to use different cutting boards. So it's not all cross-contaminated, um, like with the pumpkin that cutting board, I mean, it has some pumpkin guts on it. So I don't want that to get in with the shallots. So we wanna just switch up the cutting boards. Like if you ever feel like your cutting board is getting messy, you can always use a towel too and wipe it down and clean it off and then start again. We just wanna make sure that we're not cross contaminating ingredients. So I'm gonna cut the top of these carrots off and discard them. Um, I'm using more carrots because these are, these are from a garden, so they're not all uniform shaped like in the grocery store. So you can use more or less carrots depending on how much you like carrots. I just feel like it gives it, gives it a nice sweetness and depth of flavor. And so these are from a garden, they're not from the store, right? They are, yeah, they're from, they're not store, store bought. So they're all kind of weird, weird shapes and I'm just gonna do a real rough, rough dice of this and we're just gonna toss them right into the pan. So if you were going store-bought, what would you look out for for like a carrot? Cause sometimes you look at them, I, I know I go to the store and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm looking at and if it's good or not, what, what should you look at? Cause all I see are orange carrots. I see a variety of color on your, <laughs> on your cutting board here. Yeah, so these are, I think these are kaleidoscope carrots. So they're a bunch of different colors. There's purple ones too, but I thought that might make it look a little like baby food. Um, so I wanted to avoid that. With carrots, I feel like the only thing you wanna look out for is just make sure that they're not like flimsy in the store. Um, and then when you bring them home, I like storing my carrots in the fridge in cold water. Like if you cut them up and pre-prep stuff, like if you pre-prep any vegetables um, at your house, I would just store them in some cold water in like a flat container and that keeps them for a long time. And there's one little carrot left. 
A little, little. Very thin carrot. So these are going to cook pretty quickly. I can already see the steaming from the shallots. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. She didn't put the shallots in. So this oh, is wow, just, it's just a pan. This is just a pan. So I'm going to throw these in. And this should make some noise when you throw it in. We, we are using a different microphones than usual. So you might not hear that nice, satisfying sizzle today. If you can, that's great. You can definitely see the sizzle though. Okay, so this pan is hot. <laughs> so we just wanna get a little softness into these. So we're just gonna cook until they're just barely tender. So the, you can tell that really well if you're using an onion or a shallot, like something in that family. If you, you can see they'll start to get a little bit translucent and a little bit of color will come onto the pan. I'm just gonna put a little bit more oil in because this pan is hot and I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. We're gonna let this. About how hot would you set an oven if you're using like a, you know, a standard burner oven? So I, usually, I usually try cooking on like a medium to start. Like this pan was pretty hot. The carrots are getting pretty brown. Oh, that's a good smell. So it'll be nice. Just turn it down <laughs> a little bit. Um, so then we're just going to let this cook just until the onions are translucent, the shallots, I'm sorry, I'm just call them onions forever, until the shallots are just like translucent and the carrot is just, just soft because we're going to cook it just a little bit longer. And then we're going to add some more ingredients to the pot and let them um, all meet and mingle. And this is the base. This is the... Yeah, so this is going to be the base of your soup. You can add other vegetables if you'd like like celery is an iconic <laughs> mix. Um, you could use just pretty much any other vegetable you'd like. Leeks are really good in this. They add a nice like kind of oniony flavor as well. Um, I've done it with a bunch of different, different vegetables. You can use parsnips, which are similar to a carrot. Um, you can use beets if you wanna make it real spooky. That's gonna turn everything kind of a red color if you use a red beet. Um, there's lots of different options you can do with this. Uh, I just love the mix of the carrots and the pumpkin. It gives it just a really nice flavor. Now we're letting this chill in the pot. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the oven on and I'm gonna start making our crispy kale. So just a second while I do that. I'm gonna sneak off to the side. I'm going to do, I think I can go this far. Ooh, the oven, is that plugged into? It is plugged into this one. Maybe it's not on. There, there we go. Now we're cooking with gas. What do I want and while we're setting that up, take a look inside that bowl. Okay, so we are going to have it to 400 because we're going to start making our crispy kale topping. Okay. So this is looking pretty, pretty nice. And then before I do the kale. So I didn't cut the garlic up yet. So I'm gonna do that. Cause if we're gonna do the, the kale, we need a clove of garlic. We wanna put some garlic in here right before we add the other ingredients. And you don't wanna add garlic too early because sometimes it will brown or burn. So you wanna add it towards the end cause you don't want burnt. You don't want burnt garlic. That's not the best flavor. So I'm just gonna use the same same board. Watch this technique. We're gonna just push down and that's just gonna take the skin off. Never have trouble peeling your garlic again. Just use the wide part of the knife 
press down. And then press down, and then you can just do a quick chop when you're all ready. So I'm just gonna do a little chop. And this, with this soup, the nice thing about it is you don't actually have to like be super precise about how you're cutting everything because you're actually gonna blend it. So it doesn't really matter if, if everything is perfectly chopped to the same specifications. You can just practice your chopping skills. That one escaped. I would say someone's dog got that one, but I don't think garlic <laughs> is good for dogs. You know, it's been so long since I've had a dog. I haven't had to worry about that, but I think you are right. I think that's one of those weird, weird things that but something that is good for dogs is pumpkin. Pumpkin is very good for dogs. I'm gonna give that a mix. So this is looking pretty solid. I don't want my garlic to burn. I just wanna get that nice garlic flavor. So I am actually going to add my pumpkin and my vegetable stock. That'll help prevent the garlic from burning? It will, cause like it's, it's all gonna, mix in the same pot. So I'm just gonna add the rest of, of this. So this is all my pureed pumpkin. This is about two and a half cups. I'm gonna throw it in there. Oh. And then I'm gonna throw in my stock. That's just vegetable stock? Yeah, so this is just vegetable stock. You can use any other stock that you'd like, you can use chicken, chicken, beef. Usually when I'm making something that's vegetarian or vegan, I like to use a vegetable stock. Give this a nice mix. And I realize that it just doesn't look the prettiest right now, but once we, once we mix it all together and we're gonna use an immersion blender and we're gonna blend it, it's gonna be really nice and really smooth. It won't look as crazy. <laughs> and then we can add a little tiny bit of nutmeg. I don't like using a ton of nutmeg because I feel like that goes into pumpkin pie territory. I'm gonna add a hefty sprinkle of thyme because I am gonna add my rosemary and my sage. And this is one of the things where you can season as you go. I usually am lighter on my seasoning at first because you can always adjust. You can't really take away. I have definitely over seasoned some things in my day. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna let that cook. I'm gonna throw this. more garlic and more garlic because this is going to go on the kale i just don't want this to be too bubbly this little stove top we have here gets hot very it really nice. really does so it's different i'm going to change it to simmer so it's lower so all the flavors kind of are going to meld together and hang out in the pot and then real quick, I'm just gonna make this crispy kale. You know what we're missing as you chop that? Do we have spoons? I don't know if we do. We have spoons in this cart, yeah. Okay. Yes, we do. I was about to say, this is one of the times I get to actually eat or try something. Okay, so that means that that's all set and good to go. So that's good. As a little bowl. So then I'm just gonna put a little bit of garlic in the bowl. I'm gonna do some olive oil because we're gonna make a nice 
a nice kale, crispy kale situation. So we're gonna sprinkle that over the kale. Um, so this is called dinosaur kale because of how the leaves kind of look like dinosaur skin, how they're like rough and bumpy. And the plants can grow up to like two to three feet. They're really beautiful plants. Um, it's lacinato kale. So it's a little different than the curly kale, but it is really nice because it doesn't have, at the bottom it has a thicker stem, but at the top, the stem isn't as thick. So it is a nice option to make like chips or something out of. So I'm just gonna make little cuts. So okay. this is how you, I've seen recipes for kale chips, but this is the kale you really want if you want to make kale chips. I just like it because it's flat and sometimes with the curly kale, the chips curl up too much and they burn. So I just like doing this and we're just going to take the stem out at the bottom. Anything you do with the stems can do with the stems. I've actually pickled kale stems before and they are weirdly addictive and good. Um, it's, it's still a little bit crunchy, but it's, it's very delicious. So it is something like if you're not comfortable throwing stuff out, if you wanna just use all of your ingredients, you can, you can do, a, do a nice pickled, like a quick pickle with kale stems. So for those of you in our plant um, plant based nutrition series talking about using the whole plant, that is something you can do with the stems is pickle them and have the whole plant as part of your diet. And it is just a, an interesting thing I put them on salads before I actually think I still have a jar of them in my fridge. I'm going to do one more of these big leaves. I'm not going to do the bottom of that one. Ooh, I can hear that simmer yeah, it on is. the soup. It's a simmer in, so that's what we want. And then after I throw these in the oven, I am going to add the sage and the rosemary and the maple syrup. So this is almost, almost done. And then I can show you the pumpkin that I roasted. We can serve it up. So that's about enough for what we're doing today. This is caught in my shoe. So I already have a little parchment paper ready for me. So what you can do, should have gotten a bigger bowl. I'm gonna <laughs> do this kind of in some little batches is you just kind of want to give like a nice little toss, not too much. Can you buy this type of kale at most grocery stores? Um, I got this at Fresh Time, um, but a lot of farmer's markets has it. Um, it's, it's very good, but I think most grocery stores has some sort of kale. I've seen a lot of the curly kale. I toss it. I'm just gonna I know toss this it. is something I'm going to be picking up. So the rest of it on here. You want to get all the garlic. And you want to make it a flat layer. And then I'm going to sprinkle a little salt and pepper. And we're going to toss it in the oven just for a little bit. It's usually about like 15, 15, 20 minutes. It's not too long. Adds a nice little side or topping. To the yeah, soup. so I'm gonna use this as a topping. And it's a nice little like crispy way to get a little bit more nutrients and fiber into your diet. I'm just doing a little sprinkle. What is What are you sprinkling? So I'm just sprinkling a little bit of black pepper and I'm gonna do a little bit of salt. This is completely optional, you don't have to. You don't have to, but you can. Going to toss this in our little convection oven for about 15 minutes. Try that again. 
No, so far, this is like the cleanest kitchen we've had on a KTL Cooks. <laughs> We're usually a lot messier than we'll, this. We'll see. It's still, it's still <laughs> early. And give us a nice little stir. Stir, stir, stir. Pot is very big for what we're using it for. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in my fresh, my fresh ingredients. I love rosemary. I know a lot of people don't like it. I've heard that some people think that it tastes like Christmas trees, but I just, I love it. It's one of my all time favorites. So I go kind of rosemary heavy on a soup like this or in butternut squash soup. I put a lot of rosemary in it. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna Run your fingers down the stems. Take off all of the leaves. And just put those leaves right in the soup. Yep. And you can do like an herb bundle as well, where you would just wrap it in cheesecloth. Or if you have an herb ball, it kind of looks like a tea ball. You can put fresh herbs in that as well. And you don't really have to take it off of the stem. It's getting a nice green in there too to balance out that orange. A little bit of little pop of color. You know, you said it's a big pot, but this it is, is kind pot. of a big meal. It is kind of a big meal, so it's fitting. And we just want to make sure that we take, because rosemary can get very woody towards the end of it. You want to make sure that you just get the woody parts. Um, if if you have some of the greener stems, it's okay. It will, it will just get all blended together in a little bit. I just want to keep an eye on the clock because I did not put a timer. You cook by instinct is what you yes. want to say. You, you, season with, you season with your heart. So I'm not going to use all of this sage. I think I'm just going to use one bundle. Uh, just because that might be a little little sagey for people. So for this, I'm going to do the same thing because I don't want to give everyone the stems. I'm just going to do a quick peel because we just want to give the leaves. And then I'm going to roll and just do a really, really quick chop. So roll, then chop. And you can like brown, brown this in butter first if you want. You can leave it fresh. I'm just gonna do a little bit. Let's take a look in that soup now that all the greens are in there. Still looking nice and thick. <laughs> nice and thick. And you can use uh, fresh thyme as well. You can use any other like oregano, any other seasoning that you really like, any herb that you are growing in your garden this year or anything that like catches your eye at the grocery store. Um, this is kind of adaptable. I just really like rosemary, sage, and thyme I feel like is a iconic, let's see, I'm just gonna leave it like this. I feel like this is a good temperature. We can add our two tablespoons of maple syrup, and that's just going to give oh. it a little bit of sweetness. Okay. I did not think we were getting syrup involved, but here we are. <laughs> and you can use uh, agave nectar. You can use honey if you if it's not vegan. You can use whichever you like. So we'll let this cook a little bit longer, and then we actually are going to take it off of the heat because we're going to add our our milk. And then we can do a quick pick, a quick peek at our kale. See how it's doing in the oven. So you can see it's getting real brown. We're gonna give it just a little bit longer and I'm gonna fix my microphone. Oh. This is the eternal issue with clip-on mics yeah. and cords. I'm just gonna give us a couple more minutes of hanging out in the pot together. And I'm gonna turn it down to keep warm.
So this is this is a good soup to have for the just the fall season in general, right? Yeah, I love it. I mean, you can use this with you can make it with squash if you have if you prefer squash to pumpkins. Um, but just pumpkins are so prevalent in like September and October. It's a nice way to use a pumpkin that's not just carving it mm -hmm. um, or using it in pie. So it's it's a real fun way. Plus, if you serve it in a pumpkin, I just think it looks really cool and people get really excited. So I'm gonna move this on to warm. I feel like it has mixed enough. And you know, there's a group using this room afterwards and I'm so jealous of them. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna smell very, very good in here. So this is the pumpkin that I roasted whole. Um, so you can see it has kind of indents. This is actually the bottom of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna cut it from the bottom because I think that there is, you can see that this part is a little soft. So there is probably a tiny, tiny hole here and I do not want my soup to leak out. So I'm gonna cut this one and you can see it's so much easier to cut because it's all roasted and soft. I don't even hear the knife going. It's so just... this is an option too, if you are not comfortable cutting a whole pumpkin because it's too like hard or um, you can always just roast it first and then you can cut it and take it off that way. Or you don't want to hurt your knives. Yes. So it is a little awkward to do it from the bottom because I don't have the nice stem. We'll see if we can get through this. You might have to use a spoon to get the lid off. Gonna try to <laughs> come on. This one is very thick, which is good, right? You wanted a thick pump. Yes, you do want a thick pumpkin. Come on, I just oh. want the top to come off. I'm actually gonna turn this off because I feel like these are probably good. Oh yeah, I can definitely hear the crispiness of those kale chips. And I don't want it to burn, burn. So we'll just turn that off. I'm just gonna use this fork. Oh, this is gonna be good. Hopefully not break it. Oh my gosh. It does break. We call that a happy little accident. <laughs> More punk. Okay, there so it this is. is. Oh, that is so thick. Let me get inside. But yeah, so this is a oh my thick gosh. pumpkin. Look at that. Actually just drop some of it. Sweat. See if I can get the guts out. That is what we just took off. So you can still, if you roast it whole, you can still use the seeds and roast them too. It's not mm -hmm. like double roasting the seeds. It's not because they're not completely roasted. So you can just wash them off and roast. Roast them again. Just gonna set this off to the side. And this is a very, very thick pumpkin. I can like feel the other side of it already. All right, you know, you said that they would get a little messier. I <laughs> see that. I told now. you. <laughs> I did warn you, <laughs> weren't done yet. So this one has a ton, a ton of flesh in it. This is a very fleshy pumpkin. <laughs> so perfect. So I'm probably not gonna be able to put all of the soup in it. But we'll just ladle a little bit. So would you say that's perfect for your haunted houses? If you want that little fleshy extra bits? Is these thick up that thickness inside there? Yeah. Yeah, this is a this is a full pumpkin. There's lots and lots of guts. And the nice thing about this too is you can kind of scoop 
the roasted pumpkin out in with your soup. If you want chunks, because we are gonna puree this soup in just a second. Just grab these other seeds. I think you'll wanna rotate. Yeah, you're getting those ones right in the back. <laughs> come on, just come out. <laughs> it's hard to do with this fork. I'm gonna revert back to the spoon. You have a grapefruit spoon. It works great for this. Um, anything with like a serrated edge. I know they make special tools to carve pumpkins, which you could also use. I just want to get all the seeds out. Somebody wants a seed in their soup. There's one, yep, right there. You spotted it. Wow. Okay, I think I got all of the seeds out, so that's what we want. I'm just gonna do a rinse of my hands. Be quick. Now that, there's a lot in there. Yeah, so this has a ton of flesh. Uh, so this is actually a great roasting pumpkin. You can make a ton of puree out of it. Um, the pumpkin that I used was a similar size and it only had about like two and a half cups of actual flesh in it. So this is a, a good sized pumpkin. So I'm going to Ooh. use my immersion blender. An immersion blender. So Are I'm you... going to blend the soup. So All I have right. this off now. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna stick it in because we want it to be nice and creamy. Any tips for using an immersion blender? Um, if you can get it kind of on the side because you wanna get all the chunky bits down and just clean it out every now and then when you're using it because some, sometimes things get stuck. This is not the newest immersion blender. So if you have a new fancier one, I don't think things get us stuck. I feel like immersion blenders are a fairly new thing too. I don't know. I've used them for a long time. I love using this for like salsa, anything okay. that you need to mix. See a carrot. So we're just going to kind of move it. So we want to get it as smooth as we possibly can. Also use a stand blender for this. Um, I just did not want to use it just in case it pops off. I don't want there to be pumpkin soup everywhere. I'm sure our, our custodians also don't want pumpkin yeah. <laughs> soup everywhere. It's going a lot smoother now. Mix it for a little bit longer. I think that is as good as we're going to get for today. So then all I'm going to do, um, so since I'm using heavy cream, I'm just going to add a little bit of it to it. Uh, if you're using coconut milk, you could have added it before you blend it or after you blend it. Um, it really depends on how how you like your soup. Um, you can also just add it on top if you don't want it to be like super, super creamy. So I'm gonna add a little bit. So we're just using heavy cream this time. So again, if you wanna make it vegan, you can use coconut milk, you can use almond milk, whatever, whatever milk you like, you can use. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. 
and then we're gonna give it a mix. That's just that's gonna lighten the color and give it a nice cream. Okay. So then all we have to do that is a very nice orange is just ladle it into our pumpkin and you'll just serve it just like that. Wow, that's um, it. And then you can top it with your kale. So I'll do that. here until we can do the dishes. And I'm going to take my kale out here. Well, it's nice and brown. And then you can just ladle your soup into your pumpkin. Pouring's a risky option. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do a little bit. Maybe this will fit all of it. I just imagine this feels really good to the soup that just had its guts torn out of it. <laughs> it's like, what have you done with me? And it's like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> And you can put it in your pumpkin. There's a little left over. And then your nice kale chips. You can put some on top. If they're too big, you can crunch them. So you got nice crunchy, crunchy kale. And then I like pepitas on top of my soup too, just because it's pumpkin seeds. So it's pumpkin, pumpkin seeds. There's all sorts of pumpkin. Yeah, just pumpkin. In different forms and you can sprinkle a little bit of your leftover milk if you want um, i'm not going to do that because i'm actually going to pour this back into the bin um so yeah, you can just serve it people can eat out of it um or you can have like your own individual small pumpkins if you find like the perfect small pumpkin for it you can do it that way too but then just serve and enjoy and that's it that's how you make pumpkin soup <laughs>